So let me start with your permission, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we thank Intas Oncology for being our sponsor for this webinar. And uh, uh, on behalf of my program coordinator, Dr. T.P. Sau and Dr. Amish Ora, I have a pleasure in starting this uh, webinar on preparation for wave of medical legal cases in the COVID pandemic. Today, we have a distinguished uh, panel of five experts. Um, as I read the names on the slide, Dr. Suresh Vashir, general surgeon and medical legal expert from Gurgaon. Dr. Vinit Talwar, medical oncologist from New Delhi RGCI. Dr. Neeraj Nagpal, gastroenterologist and medical on legal expert from Chandigarh. Dr. Ullas Batra will join us uh, about 10 minutes. He's a medical oncologist also from New Delhi. And Dr. Pradeep Arora, pediatric surgeon and medical, uh, medical legal expert from Nagpur. So we all know that uh, COVID-19 pandemic is a real danger. And a, more than 87,000 health staff have been infected with COVID. And uh, maybe this is old dated uh, from August 2020, but obviously more than a thousand doctors have also succumbed to this illness. So let me uh, start by asking Dr. Neerad Nagpal and then Dr. Pradeep Arora. Is the COVID pandemic fertile grounds for potential medical legal cases? Dr. Neeraj, we'll start with you. Thank you, Dr. Purvish. This is a question which is most uh, prioritized in my mind because the way things are developing with CPA 2019 now in practice, in vogue, notified, we already have a fertile ground for more and more medical legal cases with more and more compensations being asked. And now this pandemic and more than the pandemic, the rapidly changing protocols, the rapidly changing guidelines yes. is creating a very, very fertile ground for increased number of medical legal cases being filed against doctors. These will be filed not only uh, in routine consumer protection act cases, in uh, criminal courts, they may also be filed under Disaster Management Act. They may also be filed under Epidemics Diseases Act. They may also be filed under uh, this Clinical Establishment Act. And we will have to defend them uh, in all these uh, places maybe simultaneously. So I'm definitely of the opinion that we expect a four to five times increase in number of uh, claims filed in number of uh, cases filed against doctors in the next couple of years regarding treatment of COVID and during these COVID times, treatment during COVID times. That is very yeah. unfortunate news. Uh, Pradeep Ji, what yeah. is your opinion? Yeah. In addition to what Dr. Nagpal said, this is a fertile ground also because there are many factors peculiar to this unprecedented uh, uh, calamity. Yeah. which has brought up many, many other uh, parameters. For example, there are delays in treatment. Uh, oncologists know it very well. They are caught in a dilemma. If they do, if they, if they give treatment early, there, is, uh, there may be immunosuppression, COVID infection might be there. If they don't, tumor progression may be there. For valid reason, there might be delays, but patient won't understand. So the litigation rate will increase. Similarly, the allegation of nosocomial infection. That is, I went to the hospital and got uh, the infection. All so right. this, another, yeah, this is very important ground for uh, litigations, which might happen. This we were not seeing earlier. Then okay. similarly, since resource crunches there because of the size of the crisis. So that is a very important dimension. The doctor cannot help it. In uh, this Joshi's uh, PIL, Simultaneously, there was another PIL going on in Bombay High Court. And the question... And Sir, one, okay, uh, we'll, like, go, we'll go to that PIL, right? Okay. So, there, there are delays. Sometimes they are for valid return, denials also. And the charges of overcharging because capping is there, which is impractical. So, right. that is another dimension. Right, right. So just to add to what important things Dr. Nakhla has said. 
So my next question is for Dr. Suresh Vasist and Dr. Vinit Talwar. How will these medical legal cases be different from the normal cases that we have faced so far? We'll start with Suresh first. Uh, <clears throat> very good evening to all. And uh, thank you very much, Purvish, for making me a part of this wonderful discussion, though I'm not that wise as the other panelists are. But this is definitely going to be different in more than one ways. One is that on trivialist and on filmi filmiest grounds, the cases will be filed, which will have no basis to put allegations on the hospital or the doctors is number one. Number two, the expansion of the reasons to file medical, medical legal cases against hospital and doctors will be very vast. For all those things, even where the hospital and doctors are not responsible, the blame will be put on them like supply of medicines, supply of oxygen, and then the resource crunch. See, when this wave set in, in uh, April in North, in Delhi and uh, Haryana, yes. the staff started leaving the hospitals or they started demanding a lot of salary to the tune of 5,000 rupees per shift. And uh, most of the hospitals were exploited by this and they were not able to cope up with the number of patients because there was already oversaturation. So it was understaffed and there was, you know, hierarchy change. The class four or the housekeeping staff were doing those, you know, jobs of uh, nebulization and all those things. The nurses were doing the superior job. Everything was doing like that. Right. Senior doctors, they could not participate actively because of age, but still we did our best. So the grounds are going, then the billing. Anything which is charged by private hospitals will be challenged and can be challenged. There are a lot of cases. Apart from that, the government has done a very good job for to, to de denigrate the fraternity and the hospitals and doctors that they openly ask that kindly provide us the bill details. We have fixed these rates. If any hospital is overcharging, the committees have been set up in Haryana different districts, number one. Number two, apart from that, the, the, the advocates and lawyers, they have been severely affected by this COVID. Their earnings have gone drastically down. Now they are in a search of urgent employment. Sure, sure. Let's tell Lord, leave the lawyers apart. Uh, hmm. Vinit, what is your opinion? Uh, well, whatever uh, Dr. Vashist has said that uh, holds ground. But uh, I would think it from a slightly different angle. Uh, see, human memory is very short. All right. You are in a COVID situation. You can understand the pains which you know anybody is going through. And even in a fast track case, like the nearby case where it was super fast, it took at least three to four years. So our cases, when they will be discussed, they'll be after ENs, after five or six years. Who will be there, you know, to understand the pain and the drudgery and the suffering which uh, all of us were underwent, whether it was resources, whether it was, you name it, you know, what uh, Dr. Vashist has said. So at that point of time, will the judiciary give us the benefit of the doubt of the problems which we underwent at this point of time is debatable and I feel it is very, very doubtful. And, it, you know, that is the thing which would uh, yes. uh, be, uh, you know, troubling and, me the most. Right. And we need to, uh, Dr. Pradeep said that Cancer patients will file litigation saying why you treated me or why you did not treat me. So, uh, what do you think about that? Yes, sir. See, that is going to be there. If a person is frustrated, they can find n number of reasons uh, to show their frustration. But then we will not get benefit of the doubt at that point of time. 
because nobody is going to understand what happened then and you know they will be judging it with a very cool and a very very uh, cold uh, demeanor with hindsight so to say yeah all right thank you dr neeraj uh, and dr sahu if you are joined coming back to you what are your thoughts about show cause notice or cases against doctors by government authorities because of covid related issues dr neeraj can i start with you please so point is a uh, covid related issues any order any notification uh, when it is issued by the local authorities state authorities or national authorities every one of us is supposed to know about it and follow it and if you do not under disaster management act section 51 the punishment is for refusal to comply with any direction issued by the government is imprisonment up to 1 year and if it results in loss of lives or danger thereof imprisonment is up to 2 years and these uh, charges have been filed against doctors during this pandemic for people sitting in their opd uh, not more than 6 feet apart these are the kind of issues on which these sections have been applied against doctors mm. so the point is the government authorities can very easily under till the time disaster management act and epidemic diseases act is notified they can give any order whether it is regarding rates whether it is regarding mode of treatment even the protocols uh, which uh, have been changing from time to time and if a doctor is not following that no show cause notice will be issued and action will be taken and fir will be lodged so these cases again as has already been mentioned will drag on for a number of years and at that moment the judiciary the public will forget what was the scenario under which we were working in these times right so you are echoing what vinit said about yes, uh, memory absolutely. being short absolutely. Right, Doctor Sahu is there? Okay, he's not there. Yes, I'm there. I'm okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. What are your thoughts, Sahu? Uh, sir, uh, uh, I always feel uh, I, I had had a, my own share of these things. Yes. So I always feel uh, there is a, a sense of bias when it comes to the private hospitals and private doctors. Correct. That's my personal. Okay, but right. that's 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 my personal feeling. the sense is there the government doctors if they do it by the things are by mistake and the private does it is for a malefied uh, issue yeah. so that is something which i feel and you have to fight and prove everything that is there in spite of you being always right so i feel there is a, that point of thing i think justice is somehow not being offered or maybe not served when it comes to the private hospital i can only speak for the myself that's what understood understood very important point so let me share some of the things so as the dr neeraj said that there have been notifications sent out left right and center in this particular notification it is under epidemic diseases act disaster management act maharashtra essential services maintenance act mumbai nursing home Reg- registration act and the bombay public trust act and it says that doctors have been told to take up postings at covid-19 hospitals or lose work license and such a notice was received by me as well this is a show cause notice because a orthopedic resident at hindu rao hospital was complaining against the lack of pp and facilities available to doctors to protect themselves and in fact he was sent a termination notice for demanding ppe and telling the truth fortunately uh, good sense prevailed and this uh, termination notice was withdrawn in a few days time so uh, suresh i will start with you and then ullas if he has joined how to respond to a termination notice for voicing problems in work conditions or ppe during the pandemic suresh please sir sir if we can prove that whatever we have denied for want of a particular facility or a gadget or a pp sort of thing and if we can highlight the rights fundamental rights so the right to life is absolute and inviolable right 
so uh, what i would do i would prefer to be to go to jail rather than succumbing to the demand and fighting my case with all might with help of all people like you so that i can prove that my life also gets priority whether it is pandemic or whether it is a normal situation so similar thing happened at uh, several hospitals and i will share with you one such incident at uh, gujarat uh, medical college where 3000 residents doctors were sitting in the foyer of the opd yes, saying sir. that they were not provided with n95 mask sir so it is really unfortunate sir 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 i would like to add yes. one thing that on a practical note आए मैं मतलब हिंदी में एक चुटकला है कि आपको यदि जंगल में शेर मिल जाए तो आप क्या करेंगे तो जवाब था कि करना तो शेर को है मुझे क्या करना है <laughs> तो व्हाट डॉक्टर नीरज नागपाल हेड सेड दे कैन इश्यू एनी ऑर्डर मे इट बी जस्ट और अनजस्ट मे इट बी साइंटिफिक और अनसाइंटिफिक मे इट बी लॉजिकल और इन लॉजिकल देन यू हैव टू फॉलो इट एंड द ओनली थिंग विच रिबेन्स इज वी हैव टू बी यूनाइटेड टू फाइट अगेंस्ट सच थिंग्स राइट राइट since ulla is not yet joined can i ask pradeep ji to give his opinion on this yes what he said about article 21 that is paramount that is the most important thing you uh, of course there is no question of going to jail only thing is that you will lose the job but you can file writ petition and definitely you can reclaim it you are very much on the right side of law by refusing it it is your right by way of private defense you have you are entitled to right to life like uh, uh, he said that it is inviolable right unalienable right so there is no need to worry you will get back and with full salary all right and the world medical association has in fact uh, revised the hippocratic oath to add one sentence which says that doctors have to look after their own health in order to be providing services to others so i right. think that is also a very important point that we should take advantage of concept of social reciprocity is gaining ground in bioethics that is right. society has to reciprocate for the sacrifices made by the medical profession perfect perfect thank you now this is the gcri uh, gujarat medical college case that i was telling you uh, one um, uh, unit had complained about lack of uh, n95 and pp and he was promptly transferred from uh, ahmedabad to some other uh, far off place in rajkot fortunately there was a committee that looked into it and a reason for unfair treatment and then again this was reversed which is fortunate now this is an example of what happened in gurgaon paras hospital was given a notice that they have failed to comply with the above order stating that private hospitals shall not refuse any patient approaching them for treatment of covid infection and other critical services and they were asked to give the reply within one day similar thing has happened in maharashtra also where hospitals and facilities were taken over completely by the government saying that you have to run the hospital but we will not pay any compensation amount of any nature to you but you have to still treat covid patients on top of that when the patients covid samples were sent the reports were not released to the doctors concerned they went to the government first to the local administration and they would sometimes you know wait for four or five days no doubt because of excessive work but for five days these patients were being treated by doctors in these hospitals without knowing whether they were covid positive or not and i think this is totally unacceptable so neeraj nagpal and then pradeep arora how do nursing homes pay for staff if facilities are taken over by government how do nursing home owners ensure supplies and medicines are available and how do they protect their staff from not knowing covid status of patients admitted under their care we'll start with neeraj please uh, dr purvesh before i jump on to this question there is one thing i wanted to share sir in postgraduate institute of medical education and research here when covid actually came some doctors from various departments they started a fund and they requested other doctors and their friends to contribute to the fund so that they could buy ppe kits and they could buy masks for resident doctors right 
bring me from the director's office on instruction from health ministry a notice was issued and that issue we took up from behalf of medical legal action group side and we wrote to the director uh, not from the individual doctor side we wrote to the director from this organization side my point is these kind of issues are always better tackled by medical organizations medical associations and they should come proactively into it rather than leave one resident doctor or one individual doctor to file a case uh, when it comes to that very so true. and, and you, are, you have you have been doing that for so many years so we are very grateful you to are you for being here so right please the, the thing the issue of payment for staff facilities are taken over by the government the government is very much within its rights under section 65 of the disaster management act they can take over facilities of uh, private hospitals they can take over resource human resources they can take over uh, um, uh, vehicles but under section 66 they are bound to make payments for the team okay they not give it immediately and we may have to file a civil suit to recover the amounts that is a separate issue altogether yes. but your question is how to pay for the staff if facilities uh, are are taken over by the government and no support is coming from there i mean ultimately it will be happening like what happened when oxygen was not available individual hospitals wrote huge notices on their doors and stated that we will not be admitting any patients because of paucity of oxygen or the similar thing will happen that if we have been unable to pay our staff and under the circumstances because of lack of staff we are not able to uh, admit any more new patients so these kind of things will have to be tackled individually as situation arises right next is the issue of how to ensure supplies and medicines we have all faced this we have all uh, directly or indirectly used our contacts in administration to get oxygen to get uh, injections but the issue is it was a total black market black market not only in terms of money but in terms of power and position all right the government had uh, in in ut the entire stock of remdesivir was with the administration and it was being released selectively only for select patients hmm. most of them vvips this is something which is um, beyond me how to tackle this then protect their staff from not knowing covid 19 status we need to make our staff aware of covid protocols they need to treat all patients as covid patients unless proven otherwise so effectively if a patient is admitted we have to do what bare minimum we can do in the sense the the masks the uh, distancing the hand washing whatever maximum precautions we can take and we can ask our staff to take we should continue so right. this is what i feel perfect uh, dr pradeep arora your opinion sir i very loosely thought all the three points i will just add another dimension to it so this is important question of law which came up i plead my case myself in the court and in the famous capping case landmark judgment was given and this discussion cropped up during uh, the, the course of proceeding and i had to argue directly with the advocate general of maharashtra on this point only section 65 of disaster management act yes. i may tell you the position of law is that requisitioning is in toto it is not piecemeal it's not that you will say that you this is your investment your capital your premises your staff you run it you uh, uh, you suffer all the losses all the litigations and we will only tell you at what rate you can give service this is piecemeal requisition this is not what the law says the requisition which is being done all over india is thoroughly blatantly shamelessly unconstitutional and unlawful also because it goes against section 65 of the disaster management act the remedy lies in petitions but nobody i mean uh nobody has gone to the court with this agent but Agar. this requisition is so that answers you know that all this right. is not according to law otherwise right. on merits of the question dr nagpal has elaborated very beautifully perfect thank you so uh, in fact uh, doctors had to go to supreme court to make sure that their quarantine days were not marked as leave 
this is the audacity like you said the administrator is totally uh, clueless and heartless about what uh, problems our doctors are facing another example is how uh, doctors are made to work for hours at length without having any breaks and this uh, doc- lady doctor you know collapsed and became unconscious because she was not allowed to even take a sip of water on top of that health workers are assaulted and abused and in fact many of the societies made the doctors and nurses who had rented premises leave because they were afraid that they would bring back from their place of work the virus to the society in, in this is an example of what happened in uh, molunds uh, hospital where the class 4 staffers were blaming the civil administration for murder because they were not provided sufficient protective gear like gloves mask and sanitizers so my question will start with amish vora how did you ensure well being morale and confidence of your staff that should remain high during difficult circumstances like the second wave of covid 19 pandemic and the second part of the question is did you face any complaints or threats from your staff so we'll start with amish and since ullas is not joined i will then go to dr sau amish please thank you sir uh, i think sir the most important thing the only emotion during second wave of covid 19 pandemic was fear of death right i think that overruled every other emotion so what we did at our center was to protect our staff and make it a fortress like of thing and do a level best so i was lucky and we because we are a small unit we could uh, offer pp to all the staff even to the extent that uh, on 8 to 10 hours of duty we told our staff that even if you take a loo break and change another pp we will be able to afford it you don't worry protect yourself completely from it Very second good. thing i made a small uh, token of 11 rupee fine for anybody who is seen without wearing a mask and roaming around in the premises it was just a token of 11 rupee fine but everybody this third thing is sir nobody should ever eat two people together everybody should eat alone so these are the few things and very very strictly in fact some of the patients had threatened to sue me saying that there is no law which tells that before every chemotherapy rt pcr is mandatory i was lucky that by that time more and more scientific papers started coming saying that if you give chemotherapy if you are covid positive you may land up in moderate to severe covid that came right. to our rescue and we taught all the nurses all the staff that please say this and stay away from anybody nobody was allowed we followed the us guidelines where no relative was allowed to enter the chemotherapy daycare premises we put the photos of these us daycare and everybody liked it they were sitting in their car when their relatives were getting uh, chemotherapy Perfect. we made rt pcr free for all of our staff as and when they had single episode of fever also or cough or anything so that they don't have to pay for any of the rt pcr report this was there so this is how i think once the staff realized in fact i remember when the second wave started receding our staff was not ready to leave ppe because they felt safe in that Hmm. even though we said you can wear gowns now because the numbers are but they they felt even today also they are love to wear pp rather than hazmat suit rather than just the gown nice nice because of this sir touchwood we have not faced any complaints or threats from any of the staff in fact uh, none of the staff ever refused uh, to comply with any of these guidelines i was lucky i would say that sir. awesome that is a very good example dr sau what has been your experience uh so my experience has been pretty much that the first wave was more of a fear uh, the second wave it was more that the staff were more than happy and cooperative initially because we are a predominantly cancer unit first wave people resisted from getting the covid patient cells we had to because of the government pressure but uh, there were very few staffs more eager to do the duty we had to compensate them by salary that's for sure everyone wanted the double salary and that's what we had to do Uh, for the second wave it was that people were more than happy to do covid duties that's some gross difference the numbers were more we had to open up the hospital to more than the mandatory beds threats 
Yes, it happened with my housekeeping staff and some of the nursing staff. You pay me double or I leave today. So actually for me, uh, for the, my small hospital, I had to double my housekeeping salary by twice in a, in a just five minutes, 10 minutes. So it was that there were threats, but we could do it. Uh, there were issues of uh, pricing that can be a different thing altogether, but yes, we could manage, but the staff were really poor. So you are verifying what Dr. Suresh Vashis had said earlier, that the staff were uh, you know, holding the administration and management to ransom by demanding uh, sort of danger money to because they were working in the COVID facility. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Right, right. So this is a show cause notice from the government to doctors who became COVID positive while on duty. Instead of worrying about their health or sympathizing with them, this is a show cause notice to say that how come you were wearing PP, you were supposed to maintain safe distance and still you became COVID positive. So something wrong you must have done. And therefore you have to show cause as to why action should not be taken against you. This is an example uh, from uh, Pune. Um, uh, this is about Rajiv Joshi. He said that supposing in his nursing home, which is 25 bed, there are 10 patients on oxygen and two on available ventilators. Both the ventilators are used. Now a third patient requires a ventilator. He was requiring the patient to be shifted to another hospital. But the Puna Municipal Corporation said you cannot shift. If you shift, we will cancel your registration. So government was threatening doctors and not allowing patients to be treated properly. So Suresh, I'll start with you first and then Vinit. How would you respond if you get such show cause notice from the authorities for your nursing home? Sir, first of all, that this is very unfortunate situation because those who are issuing orders, they are inhuman, but we are human. We know the value of life. We know the pain and suffering of the patient. So my first, see, we have faced similar situations. We would take the patient's attendant and patient relatives into confidence. And we will tell them that this is the situation. And then in a case, media was also involved because not exactly noticed, but a similar, you know, thing arise. And moreover, this is a fact that even if there was ventilator on the third or fourth ventilator, the patients actually succumbed for lack of facilities. So that uh, could be equated with that. But such notices, you have to comply, but then you are equally immune and protected. If you think like then in an inhuman way, then you are safe because they have refused you to transfer the patient. And if a patient dies, which to who otherwise would have died, even with ventilator. So you are at least in this particular case, you are protected by the government useless and absurd order. This All I right. take in that way. Okay. Vineet, what is your opinion? Uh, sir, uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Suresh, but uh, uh, see, uh, one has to be reasonable to oneself and one has to be reasonable to the other person. If somebody is unreasonable to you, then uh, you have to take it with a totally uh, different, uh, uh, you know, you have to maneuver uh, around it. And uh, whenever uh, we come across the show cause notice, we Tell them, you know, the skills, the infrastructure, and the knowledge about the situation that should be adequately displayed. And uh, secondly, apart from uh, things like, uh, you know, getting after your staff to get uh, vaccinated, their emotional well being, if that is there, and if your behavior, your, you know, uh, whatever you do throughout the day is... But how will you respond to the, to the show cause notice? No, we'll show them that whatever we have done, it is the standard uh, uh, situation which was supposed to be done. It was competent and it was uh, reasonable. And we ensured it and we displayed it and we documented it. So, so you will transfer the patient to some other hospital even though they want, don't want you to transfer. That's right. 
yes given a choice perfect. Uh, perfect. you have to do that yeah yeah absolutely right so, so now yeah go ahead uh, so just uh, relevant to this i just wanted to share my own personal experience please <clears throat> about the show cause notice because that's why i wrote in the chat box was it verbal or written my mother had covid uh, one and half month back in mumbai and there was a war zone which was created by government of india uh, mumbai uh, uh, commissioner uh, this thing uh, they told me you shall not admit your mother to any other place other than we tell you and when we tell you so i didn't comply to that i took my mother to hospital mother was admitted in the hospital the next day when they called i told them i said please show the written rule they said sir wo aise hi gusse mein bol diya hoga ya us time pe usne bol diya hoga aap chinta mat karo that's why i wanted to ask that if such verbal communication should we even pay heed to these verbal communications sir agree no unless it is documented we should not so many of us change the way in which we were running our opds like uh, it was mentioned that unless there was 6 feet distance between two doctors in the opd there would be allegations of negligence so also some of us started using this plastic curtains as a barrier maybe a notional barrier or just a token barrier but there was a barrier to make the people realize how serious the matter was so amish and ullas if you have joined what are the changes you made in your opd to ensure better protection from covid 19 and what did you include in a sop document that would could be produced in a court of law to prove that due diligence was done by you to protect patients as well as your staff amish will start with you uh, thank you sir uh, so the the photograph what you have shown uh, i completely changed my opd structure Uh, the uh, doctor with the th- uh, you know the surgical mask who is sitting there uh, so we made a proper glass partition between me and patient and a mic system like in embassy where patients sit after glass partition also 8 to 10 feet apart and we talk in the mic i think none of the patient complained ever because they also were worried about their own safety so this worked very well uh similarly i requested in uh, in basically whenever there was a verbal communication with the patient and our staff they told them that we would request you to go for video consultation or a tele consultation if possible and if required uh, we will uh, call you physically to the opd i think that worked very well as regards opd right. but my question uh, to you sir and few of the expert is if patient is forcing me to do physical opd no matter what and if patient refuses to get the rt pcr done before coming to opd without justifying any medical emergency am i wrong in telling patient that no i shall do only tele consultation and not physical consultation so we will come to that in a bit can i take ullas matra's opinion on these so, two uh, questions so apologies for joining up late uh, got stuck in the traffic Uh, that basically again means that the covid is getting out the second wave is uh, out and the third wave we are preparing for that right uh, uh, sir the opd exactly look like the same you know uh, we still have uh, a plastic curtain uh, between us and the patient uh, if you can see my nose i still wear a 95 mask uh, all throughout even in opd even though i only ask in this panel uh, you know whether we would uh, whether a, a mask a n95 mask is required in that uh we did maintain 6 feet distance between us and patients we did open up the uh you know uh, the ventilation part of that we did to make it open so yes we made precautions uh what would we include in the sop document uh, so again if a patient came to opd uh, we always wore gloves uh, we always uh, hand washed and did uh, we changed the sheet before the patient was coming and uh, you know after the patient Uh, there was a kind of a spray which these people used to put also uh, in the first wave any patient if they it was likely to be covid positive and had visited the opd we used to do a defogging of the opd uh, with the number of cases increasing and every second person being covid that decreased uh, before admissions we insisted so we made our things into two if you were getting admitted for chemotherapy there was no requirement of an uh, rt pcr but if was the person was uh, supposed to be admitted for any supportive care requiring admission of beyond one or two days we would request a 
uh, RT PCR or a rapid antigen test or a, a gene expert. That is right. what we did. Perfect. Okay, one uh, more thing which we did, sir, uh, was uh, let's say if we came because you know in the first wave uh, that period of quarantine was there. So let's say if one of my juniors had been exposed to a COVID positive patient while examining. Uh, they would, you know, we would order a return. This thing, ki, I have reported that they, I have got a self-reporting done. Uh, there is no fever, and they will report it to us, and we will write a mail to the administration that the period of contact was less than 15 minutes, and you know, stuff like that. All this disappeared in the second wave. Right, right. Dr. Suresh has raised a hand. Please, sir, go ahead. Sir, the, this is just to add uh, a scientific uh, view on that. That all these, you know demystifying and fogging the area and all these things, they have been proved that they are not actually working. What but I but if somebody be, wants to uh, if somebody wants to do it as an abundant precaution, there is no harm. There is as no long harm, as but, they are following but, their hospital SOPs, I think but, it is sir, fully justified. And, but sir, I would <laughs> sir, I would like to highlight only one small thing Ji. that N90 mass and N95 mass, which is Again, additionally, surgical triply mask is the best and sure shot way Agreed. to protect yourself and nothing else. Absolutely. I agree with you. Dr. Neeraj, Amish had <laughs> asked a question that can he insist on a telemedicine consultation and refuse an in-person consultation? What is your opinion about that? So, effectively, telemedicine consultation today has been permitted by the National Medical Council, by various state medical councils. Earlier, there used to be a problem with it. Now, there is no problem. Yes. And if a person is not in an emergency or if you are not seeing your patients uh, physically and you are doing only telemedicine, definitely you can refuse to see a patient who is insistent that he wants to show physically only. You can refer the patient to another uh, colleague of yours who may be doing a physical like we, we are three or four gastroenterologists, senior ones who are practicing in the city of Chandigarh. One of them has not started physical OPD even yet. Right. This is since, since March. And he simply, if the patient insists, he sends it to somebody, somebody else, can you please go and consult him? So there is nothing wrong if uh, uh, in a non-emergency situation you are doing this. If you are sitting in your OPD and a patient comes, and the patient insists that it is an emergency and he wants to, at that moment, refusing is uh, difficult. And in case the person is an advocate or in case the person is a litigious person, uh, this can lead to problem. Right, right. What I would have done, Purvish? Sir, sir, go ahead. I would have, see, there are two ways. To escape such a situation, if a person seems troublemaker, I would have given an excuse that I am not feeling well, little feverish, though I have not got myself tested, but it will be safer for you not to come physically to me. Awesome. Awesome. So I will, uh, according to the telemedicine practice guidelines, which is notified by government of India, it categorically states that a doctor cannot insist on a telemedicine consultation. Okay. So if the patient refuses for telemedicine consultation, we can't force him to do that. Then what, what are the options left for you? Dr. Neeraj and Dr. Vashis has already clearly stated and right you can choose the, whatever it is. Right, to refuse. right. But in a non-emergency case, in case yeah. of an emergency, we can't refuse. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, this is an example of a patient and family members who went to the police station and complained that a doctor was insisting on being paid for a telemedicine consultation. And their complaint in the court with an FIR was that if the patient has not been seen by the doctor, how can he charge? So this is the sort of ridiculous things that us doctors have to face. And in fact, the police officer should know what the law is about this. But unfortunately, he accepted the FIR in this particular instance. So, Amish, I am coming to you again and then Pradeep Arora. When you do telemedicine consultations, do patients pay in advance? Do they pay willingly or they argue with you and your staff? And has anyone complained or filed a case for issues related to telemedicine consultation? Amish, Arora first. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, answer to first and second question, both is yes. 
uh, <clears throat> we tell them to pay in advance but i have instructed uh, you know given the fact uh, sir is that uh, very few doctors when they are in trouble they are helped by other colleagues this i have learned a harsh reality very early on in life uh, all doctors association everything put apart at that point of time you have to fight your battle alone so i have requested my staff that you tell them that we would like to have payment in advance but if somebody creates a ruckus you tell them okay you have a tele consultation and then dr bora will tell you about the payment uh, many patients sir not one you know around 10 to 15% of patients in almost uh, more than 1500 tele consultation in both the waves which i have done 10% of patients have used the sentence humko cancer hua aur aapke doctor ko paise ki padi hai these are the sentences which people have used i have requested requested my staff just back off during this time and tell them it's okay if you don't pay just first talk to the doctor this is the resort which i have done sir as a result so far again i say i am lucky that nobody filed a written complaint against us for this verbal abuse every day it is there right right pradeep arora your opinion yes. uh, my uh, experience of telemedicine is uh, limited this is right surgeons uh, usually follow up is complimentary as such also right. and we uh, patients have been extremely grateful because we were insisting on telemedicine that they should not come Uh, but never against the wishes of the patient like you said that is not according to guidelines we would never insist but right. naturally we would persuade them to rely more on telemedicine and it has worked very well we have never uh, asked for payment in advance but right. we have raised the bill after they have come after three four days and they have been uh, uh, very grateful and they paid happily on this right. i think it right. works in routine that if you charge them afterwards post doctor dr sahu what is your opinion Uh, uh, sir, I have very limited experience. So, okay. but whatever I have, uh, sir, I have used what we spoke in one of the tele consultation which you did. So, I asked them to send a request first on my WhatsApp because the request has to come to a patient. That I always do that. Right. And once I do that, I tell them to make the payment. And I have seen uh, that no one has abused, but fifty percent don't then follow up with the consultation. That has been the, my experience as well. That yeah. Half the people so, will not follow up. Yeah, so so I'm happy with that. So right. whoever is really interested, they <laughs> excellent, excellent. So this is about death of a doctor during a COVID pandemic. So one doctor died, and his widow has filed a case in the High Court. And this was against so many organizations from the health department and the medical education department and the secretary and the Union of India. Yeah. so what she said was that my husband died because of she was forced to start treating covid patients he was forced to open his opd and he, the government had announced a claim of 50 lakhs so i want that claim because my uh, husband died now the navi mumbai municipal corporation had sent a notice to all doctors and hospitals and dispensaries as to show cause as to why you are keeping your dispensary locked and based on this he had opened his dispensary <clears throat> he had also received a circular from the director of medical education and issue uh, that your services are required for prevention and treatment of covid patients for at least 15 days now when it went to court this is what the government of maharashtra said that yes we sent the circular but his services were not requisition requisition under these circulars and therefore we could not lose sight of the fact that in this writ petition the petitioner has not valid question the va constitutional validity of the scheme in any way and unfortunately the widow was not given this money so neeraj and suresh this question is to you what would you have done differently in the uh, and i will also ask pradeep arora for the answer what would you have done differently to ensure that the case was won by the widow of the deceased doctor we'll start with neeraj then suresh and then pradeep neeraj please this is this is an issue which uh, should have been pursued and if the high court had refused to support or if the new india assurance company had i mean this this had to be going in appeal even up to supreme court in case because this right. is not an issue of one doctor alone 
Correct. And other organizations, probably, at least if this thing ever comes to Supreme Court, Medical Legal Action Group will be very happy to implead uh, as party in this case. Very good. Very good. Suresh, what is your opinion? Sir, I think still, first of all, I will involve you and Neeraj to fight for this case, number one. Number two, the initial charge. See, there was a demand of the declared amount of 50 lakh insurance. I would have demanded 10 crores minimum as a, not as a compensation, but as a penalty on the authorities for causing deliberate death. All right. Of the doctor who was serving because of under their instruction. And he has to be indemnified. And as Dr. Nagpal has rightly said, we should collectively go to Supreme Court and fight out this case. I am willing right. to contribute to that. Right. Pradeep ji, your opinion, sir. Yes. What uh, respected Dr. Nagpal is wishing, I have already, I am already doing it. And uh, the SLP is ready. And uh, I am going to file it. In fact, if this webinar was not there, I would be giving last touches to it and uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's of that petition only is ready. There are five videos I have taken along with. I am petitioner number one there. And one Dr. Neelima, who is uh, president elect of Association of Medical Consultant, she's petitioner number two. So uh, we are filing in one or two days. E filing we are doing from Nagpur. That's awesome. wonderful, sir. All the best. Great. That's wonderful. I'm not supported by association. And as you know, I author my. Uh, petitions myself, I plead myself. So no money is involved, but yes, support is always a wonderful thing. Moral but support. I am in Gurgaon. Yes. So uh, it is being done. Awesome. Awesome. Thank this you. is excellent Thank news. You. Excellent. Thank you, Pradeep Ji, for that. Now, this is the IRDA circular. And that is the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. It says where hospitalization is covered in a product, insurers shall ensure that the cases related to COVID shall be expeditiously handled. And the cost of admissible medical experience during the treatment as well as during the quarantine period should be settled in accordance to the terms of the policy contract. So at least one uh, government regulatory authority is supporting that uh, insurance companies should pay as soon as possible. Now we come to allegations against doctors. So this was uh, uh, in the Indian Express, where a COVID victim's wife alleged sexual harassment and negligence at BR hospitals. So the allegation is uh, because of a viral video. And based on that, she said that she was molested when mother and husband were admitted. Husband died of medical negligence and there was a black market of oxygen cylinders. So all of these, except for the sexual harassment, we have already discussed. This is how the national news channel were interviewing her and made a big ho-ha. And in this, in this interview, she actually said that the compounder by name of Mr. Jyoti Kumar allegedly assaulted her sexually by pulling her dupatta and putting her, his hands on her hips. Another video on social media was from this uh, Bankishola area where COVID patients was shown to be lying nude near the toilet and food plates were lying scattered on the patient's bed. This is an example of how a patient in uh, Mumbai wrote a complaint to Reliance Hospital about irresponsibilities of the doctors and the hospital administration. So I will ask all of the, all the faculty one by one. In your experience, what was the warning sign that a particular patient or a family member is likely to be a troublemaker? So can I start with Dr. Sahu first? Have you been able to identify potential troublemakers in advance by looking at warning signs? If Sahu is no. not... Uh, Yes, sir. So, Dr. Sao is not there. Okay. Can I ask Amish, please? <clears throat> sir, there is, uh, as uh, one of our colleague, Dr. Randeep, had told me that unless and until proved otherwise, every sign is a warning sign, you should take it that way. Right, <laughs> so, right. I always remember him whenever I talk to people. But I think telltale signs of uh, not asking every small particular detail 
is my number one uh, warning sign even before covid times yeah. that they would like to ask you every small detail they would like to ask you in writing what is what you are doing what dose how frequently are you giving i think that is number one and i would like to hear from other faculty so that we sure. can have uh, collective uh, intelligence we need your opinion now and then ullas dr vinay uh, sir uh, when you know the the attendants uh, start acting intelligent you know and uh, they start getting uh, second opinions from outside yes. and they start discussing with you or uh, sometimes they start creating problems in the consent or apart from the medical treatment in which they can't find fault they start finding fault in the non medical areas the infrastructure the nursing related the dirt here and there so these are the things you know which uh, uh, you know very true open my antenna and you know i start right. looking here and there ullas in addition to these points what have you agree with amish and saying every patient is a potential uh, trouble maker unless proven otherwise right <laughs> that is one uh, whatever vinit said was absolutely right in addition if somebody doesn't behave i mean to you the senior staff they are okay but if they start they don't they misbehave with your junior staff when they come for rounds somebody who doesn't uh, you know uh, uh, five people sitting on the sofa when the doctor comes doesn't stand up over there uh, you know and um, probably this and somebody who is in in front of you uh, absolutely mystery ki goli ki ji doctor bhagwan ho and who says namaste and the one guy who says doctor we have full trust in you and right. i'm not taking any second opinion is the guy to watch out for correct correct absolutely pradeep ji what is your opinion uh, tell tell sign according to me the most important when is when the number starts increasing of relatives that hmm. is very important sign I that is that you should especially when patient is critical and uh, anything can happen and uh, the there may be an occasion for breaking news also so right right that is the point that you must be very vigilant then you must alarm your staff that will come next though right uh, so uh, that is very important so when they start building up their number and they become that's a very good very uh, good point they do increase their unrest there is a palpable unrest they yes. become very inquisitive and say mama has come you talk to him you know this relative has come you talk to him he is highly placed you talk to him and again and again they come for reassurance so right. that is very dangerous right, right. suresh vashish what has been your experience sir uh, there is a term like silent mi wherein there are no signs and symptoms and a patient gets mi and even uh, dies uh, without noticing similarly at times it could be symptomless trouble but the main thing as per our history goes first is you know chief complaint history taking so if you find a personal history try to avoid six p's one is politician another is police personnel then is a prosecutor means lawyers and other people then a public figure like sharukh khan or akshay kumar then press and media people and then public administration ad, administrator like ias and provincial services uh, officers they should be best avoided but unfortunately i treat them most <laughs> uh, finally dr neeraj your opinion sir so i am very very apprehensive of patients who come and touch my feet on the first visit okay. <laughs> right 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 <laughs> the ones who praise you a lot are the ones to watch out for the most right as rightly pointed out certain professions they are you you need to be extra careful when dealing with these in his six p's i would also add a seventh p which is a physician doctors also do not make very good patients very true and very they very are very equally, and do, they, they are equally uh, competent to create problems for uh, uh, doctors themselves i i get so many calls from uh doctors ki we have come to know you help in these medical legal matters meri mother ki yahan admission hui wo hua ye hua i mean it just carries on and on so even physicians are uh, problematic and as physicians i i personally believe uh, we should treat but when we go as patients we should behave as patients we should not be trying to get 
the my friend in USA to ring up Dr. Purvesh Parekh to tell him what kind of uh, chemotherapy is to be used in uh, my mother or so and so forth. I mean, this 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 seventh P is also quite problematic. Very true, very true. So I have outlined my experience and I think most of these points, if not all, have already been covered by you. So that is great. Thank you very much. So again, sir, sir yes. can I ask a question, sir? Please, please go ahead. <laughs> sir, we all have given our opinions. Is there a retrospective data or uh, the 100 cases filed in the court and going retrospectively, these were the telltale signs for, because I think we all are very much uh, interested in knowing this. In addition to that, sir, in the corporate hospital last when I was in, 90% of the trouble making would go down the moment uh, their bills were reduced or they were waived off, sir. Right, right. So violence is an issue I will like to have one minute over here. Please do not forget that 60 to 70% of incidents of violence against healthcare professionals in India occurs in government hospitals. Right. Money or bill is not the reason the, the article Dr. Purvesh has published uh, uh, my article in the South Asian Journal of Cancer. Uh, it covers this mob violence part and it is very, very important that we get this myth away from our minds that it is the hospital bill which generates violence. It does not. In a government hospital, the treatment is free of cost. Why does violence occur there? Violence has no correlation with hospital bills. We need to get this thing very clear in our heads. Violence is happening because there is no fear of any repercussion. There is Correct. an emotional situation. There are people who exploit these emotions and create political capital out of it which leads to this these incidents of violence. So I can just carry on and on on this issue, but I just wanted to check on this particular point that it is not the hospital bill alone, or it is not the hospital bill, which is the predominant reason for violence against healthcare professionals. Right. Neeraj, please continue with this question. If you identify such a potential troublemaker, what precautions will you take to ensure that you protect yourself from physical, mental, and financial harm? So it depends on whether you have identified the potential troublemaker when he has first come to you in the initial days, in the initial first day or the first hour of his visit yes. or his admission, or he has already been admitted with you for the past 15 days, and now you are identifying him as a potential troublemaker. Correct. If you are identifying him after 15 days as a potential troublemaker, chances are you are going to land up with a claim. So please involve, do your documentation properly. Spend 15, 20 minutes extra every day on that particular patient. Do your documentation properly. Ask the billing department repeatedly to try and get the bills settled as a, on an equitable basis. Because in case of death later, this is going to be a problem. And inform your insurers if you feel that these people who are coming, who are uh, threatening, who are uh, um, repeatedly coming to your office and asking you uh, 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 or appearing to be the troublemakers, involve your insurance company at that time so that they know ki yes, this is a particular case which may give rise to a claim later and they should not have a opportunity to deny claim because of some clause in the uh, indemnity insurance. Exactly. So financial harm you can take care of there. Second right. thing is, if you are anticipating death and violence, if you are anticipating death and violence, then there are many steps you need to take Number one being involve the police. Inform the police to be, uh, key, I expect violence to occur in this place and it will uh, lead to a problem in treating the other patients. So kindly uh, do the needful. Once you have informed them, after that it is their duty to take over and do whatever is needful. Mental, you can't really protect yourself because the stress of a threatening telephone call 
the stress of a person barging into your office and uh, screaming at the top of your her, her or his voice and abuse uh, a physical uh, slap or something these leave a very deep impact and second victim syndrome which uh, has been described in detail in western literature in india we do not find medical errors as the only reason for second victim syndrome these incidents of threats violence a case filed against a doctor all these are added etiologies of the second victim syndrome leading to even suicidal thoughts among doctors very leading to going to that extent so right. this is something which which we can just keep on speaking about right. when you are talking of how to prevent yourself from physical harm right it is very important that all hospitals when they are being designed they should be designed in such a way that there is a safe room a safe Perfect. room means if in a situation a doctor feels ki he is going to be beaten up he should be able to retire to a room which is a safe room which can the door cannot be broken uh, easily and he can contact whom whoever he wishes to number 2 okay. it is very important that areas are segregated if the hospital is such that opd and uh, the reception area are on the ground floor from the ground floor coming to icu they should be so segregated that you can seal certain areas off a damage which can be done in an opd will be 10 times more if the vandals reach the icu because their expensive equipments are there so all this planning needs to be done beforehand this cannot be done at immediately that point Perfect. so to prevent physical dam physical harm you need to isolate yourself you need to leave the premises and it doesn't matter what happens later to protect yourself if you Uh, abandon your uh, hospital or you uh, seal, seal yourself into uh, a safe room whatever action is tomorrow contemplated or criminal uh, charges are filed we can defend ourselves ki we had to do this to prevent physical harm to ourselves all right right perfect pradeep your opinion and experience is that as soon as you identify that problem is there and the violence can uh, break out then you should take all you know, the measures uh, to protect yourself for example like uh, dr nakpal also said sensitize police you ring up uh, the person on patrolling tell him that violence can break out so he should be uh, he should be uh, he should come as soon as you raise the alarm again tell your staff that you know uh, tell your staff what to do you know who will inform the police tell them not to leave the premises they should also build up their number take help of the bouncers in some cities bouncers are available so they can be uh, hired for a few uh, hours uh, till you i mean up to the time uh, the crisis is there you can get the bouncers also then in uh, few cities and many cities in fact doctors also help each other by forming a kind of task force so as to raise numbers so that is important that uh, you should take all these means to because if you uh, if you uh, put yourself in one room and lock yourself then the property will not be protected that is the problem so you want to protect all three all three are in continuum physical mental and financial harm if one right. is your property is damaged all three are damaged very true very true so thank you so this well, this is a physical law and order problem and there is a physical assault on you it has to be repelled by physical means only. right right now coming back to another case uh, and again uh, dr joshi is uh, was involved in the arguing this uh, there was a petitioner who alleged that expensive medicines are used indiscriminately by doctors in spite of non availability these drugs are being prescribed and instead of using a 10 rupee drug costly drugs are being given for financial gain and when it came to court the advocate general was unable to respond adequately the problem is when these issues are discussed in court they get published in media families of patients who have died are therefore instigated to file cases that doctors did not follow protocols 
and doctors are being harassed so we as we have discussed and all of you have said who will protect the doctors in such situations many years later when it comes to the court so in that current uh, instance and i have written dr rajiv joshi's name here yeah the judge actually was sensible and said no order can be passed by the bench regarding alleged misuse of drugs now this is what the chief justice said and i point to the last line that advocate was uh, appreciated that the suggestion is there and that a special cell has to be formed to look after such cases filed against doctors and also both the civil and the criminal lawyers were asked to finalize guidelines so neeraj pradeep and sau i'm going to ask you one by one is there any point in working with government authorities to set up cell for medical negligence and violence against doctors and help formulate guidelines for such cases neeraj can i start with you please so there is no way we can avoid doing this it is right. like you are telling a baby not to cry even though the baby is hungry yes right if the baby will not cry the mother will not feed so the baby has to cry so when you say is there any point in working with the government we have to work with the government there is no way we can ask the government of pakistan to help us here <laughs> we have to work with government of india right right we may agree they may not agree but tomorrow when we go to court like even in this consumer protection act case we have filed we have made representations to ministry of consumer affairs first we made representations to ministry of health first we did not get any response from them then we went in pil to mumbai bombay high court so there definitely whether the government listens to you or does not listen to you we have to approach the government with representations physically or uh, electronically when we make representation on particular issues believe me i spend more, send more than 400 emails of all member parliaments and we send representations to them fantastic whatever party they may be wonderful because wonderful some some one of them will pick that point up and raise it in the parliament it will serve our purpose nice nice so that money which is spent does doesn't go waste right and secondly when we make a representation we get it legally uh, uh, corrected we we get a legal frame work given to it because as a doctor i tend to get emotional and i tend to outpour things which are um, may not be exactly legal in the correct terminology so we involve advocates we ask them to legally reframe the basic uh, thing petition which we have created and then we send it most of these petitions which we send we send a draft law of what is it that we are wanting whether yeah. if, even if we are wanting an amendment we, we send a copy of the draft amendment that we are wanting nice government doesn't listen that is a separate issue but definitely right. your question is should we work right. yes we should yeah. work with the government pradeep what has been your thoughts and experience sir well, I, i mean where uh, dr nagpal has left and 100% very good uh, you know stance that we have to go by government authorities after all we protest but we are not in course of collision or sedition with them right okay but what i want to tell you one very interesting point what the court is doing here in fact it should have been done long back 10 years back if yeah. you read the law itself this maharashtra medicare institution act protection act and in other state acts also in the section 7 or section 8 in certain uh, you know this is what is given in fact that a cell should be set up with authority and it is given in great detail in sub in uh, in, in three subsections but wow. they uh, there it has been allotted just one responsibility that they will listen them hear them their grievances and then guide them that what is the right course that they should not resort to violence because people are in anger things won't change overnight and right. it will not succeed unless you address the problem of people anger also simultaneously so it's a it is a is is a is very really true that you have a cell where both the things are addressed patients right. can also vent their anger and know what is lawful and they are also told that you cannot do violence that's the best way of controlling violence not the new law but right. implementing this new law correctly and it is a wonderful thing 
नाइस नाइस सर साहू यार सॉरी साहू प्लीज गो यार नो 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 इशू सर सर शुड वी बी वर्किंग गवर्नमेंट श्योर यस वी शुड बी द प्रॉब्लम बट रियली इज देयर इज व्हेन देयर इज अ टेक्निकल लेट्स लाइक द टॉसिक एंड द स्टेरॉइड केस द कमिटी व्हिच इज फॉर्म आई थिंक दैट्स द प्रॉब्लम now does it have enough experience to look into this particular drugs is the only issue because most of the committees are filled up with the senior persons who have very fixed ideas and that's where the problem actually is because that should be expert and the expert should be expert in what you are dealing with. and that's somehow what i feel most of the committees very do true. lack very true. so that is one thing so, but i think there is no other way because the government or the court are the two only authorities who can acquit you or convict right. you so right. i think we have to take them away all right pradeep so we, you have, yeah, we already ahead. have in haryana we already have a negligence board wherein there is one representative from the ima i have been a member of this district negligence board for more than 3 years all right yeah. and has it has it helped by you being there uh it of course it has helped uh, maybe significant significant excellent pradeep you have raised the hand yeah. please go no, ahead. i will just add the important point that the authority the cell that has been described in section 7 that i just alluded to that incorporates a medical expert also within the team so that is a wholesome team and then it would it is having a statutory sanction so it would be essential and right. not like in, in uh, committee that uh, my friend has just mentioned that is an optional kind of thing you know yes. it, that is but it right. it would be statutory essential thing so it can help a great deal in controlling right. all right right here i am showing an example of what happened in agra where a compensation was asked for by uh, wife of uh, dinesh pratap singh and they asked for financial issues medical incompetence negligence and administrative failure okay and then in that uh, complaint to the court they have pinpointed each and every aspect of what is there in the national task force recommendation by the ministry of health on what has to be done and what has not to be done so this is like uh, in a lighter way i am showing this a boss forwarded an email to his secretary and asked her to inquire whether it is from his lawyer or a tailor and what was he referring to the email read suit is ready trial on monday so i think uh, we should be ready for some things like this so ullas uh, vinita and amish i am going to ask you this and then we will end here because we are already overshot the time what precautions would you advise when we face the third wave ensuring treatment is according to government guidelines document reasons for giving treatment outside the government guidelines and when using medicines of label ullas i'll start with you i think documentation 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 i mean most importantly documentation and communication with the patients so let's say once we have the third wave uh, so we should try to follow the orders according to the guidelines but we should also have our own hospital guidelines and if we are going uh, beyond the guidelines i think i would want to document and communicate with the uh, this thing that's all that i can come to my mind all right all right we need whatever your your opinion well uh, in india only thing works is www.danda.com if you don't <laughs> implement it nothing works in yes. india you have got rules you have got the best of the rules but when it comes to implementation everything goes for the toss right. you know i'll take a small example uh, one uh, chap who's a commissioner in a small uh, city in up he has said that all the civil servants there will get their salary only after they are vaccinated if they show their vaccination certificate they'll get their salary otherwise they'll not get it so, and right. similar thing i'll tell you uh, you know uh, when i was going on the ring road which is the main arterial road in delhi hmm. till the time there were no cameras to check the speed everybody used to drive in gay abandon now cameras are there people are crawling on roads being very very methodical and they are falling so you know we should impress on the vaccination we should impress on the masking we should impress on the social distancing and we should be very ruthless in implementation and of course uh, we have to have our own uh, 
institutional protocols by which you know we can defend because all situations need not be a copy book picture yeah. and we can rely on them and then we can you know at least defend in the court anywhere if you know uh, they instantiate it right absolutely amish your turn please So in addition to what Dr. Ullas and Dr. Vinith has said, uh, one thing what I have learned uh, from you and many other uh, friends who are lawyers is that uh, apart from following guidelines, if you are deviating from that, please make sure that you contact one of your colleague and their opinion you document in your file because the court of uh, the court would see that the. uh the expertise may not be of super class but it is of reasonable uh, treatment so if any of your colleague of the same similar uh, field would do the same like you then you are justified in what you are doing got it I, got it yeah thanks thanks amish uh, dr neeraj i must uh, take your opinion on this this is uh, reproduced from a whatsapp chat in a group where uh, the qu- three questions to you are written here is it possible for an accused to get bail when arrested for a non bailable offence that is one second is under what provisions of the law is this permitted and third is can ima challenge such a bail because the doctor was asking the state ima to do so dr neeraj please so non bailable and bailable is simply a differentiation on the severity or the gravity of the crime and the amount of punishment which is prescribed for the crime so the cut off usually taken is around 3 years so if uh, uh, the punishment for a particular crime is more than 3 years it is considered non bailable now does non bailable mean that bail cannot be granted courts can grant bail in non bailable uh, uh, sections also uh, under special circumstances and uh, e- even the sex of the person is one of the issues which is taken into consideration when this kind of a bail is being uh, contested i am definitely can challenge why can't i am challenge if uh, something like this is happening uh, the person himself can go in appeal but the i am definitely can challenge uh, if a perpetrator of violence has gone ahead and uh, done uh, uh, has beaten up a doctor the i am uh, itself definitely can go in uh, appeal what one thing which i would like to say is which was being discussed earlier and uh, we missed that point the issue is how are these guidelines made i have an example of all india institute of medical sciences giving a guideline of what kind of human resources are needed to run a 10 bedded icu all right if i had opportunity i would show that slide there are 21 different types of human resource personnel which are mentioned and for each type there may be six or three or two or and when we calculate the cost involved of hiring this many human resources for a 10 bed icu the cost came to around 21000 rupees per day for an empty bed without any patient on it so that means no disposables no drugs have been used when guidelines are being made in ivory towers you are not considering what is happening in the society what is happening we have 70% of the healthcare is being given in small and medium healthcare establishments you are not involving the doctors who are involved in providing this healthcare when you are making policy the policy is made by people who are who should have been in the margarshan mandali without any uh, reason to uh, Uh, be issuing any any guidelines very true so my point is guidelines are needed yes but they should be guidelines which can and should be practiced in a liberal fashion it should be uh, aimed at the le- low, lowest common denominator okay. it should not be what a per- person sitting in aims is going to do because tomorrow one of these guidelines will be brought and said ki ji your 10 bedded icu does not conform with these uh, guidelines you do not have so many uh, 150 staff which uh, is mentioned in the okay. guideline so you are negligent agreed agreed sir thank you very much i think we have overshot time significantly 
so i will stop here and thank uh, all the expert faculty and my co program coordinators dr sau and amishwara please join me in thanking dr suresh washes dr vinit talwar dr nirad nakwal dr ullas batra and dr pradeep arora before we sign off reminding you that on 22nd june we will have an audit of covid deaths in four centers in india and this is going to be moderated by dr ullas batra and finally i end by thanking our uh, sponsors intas oncology for doing this uh, thank you everyone excellent program thank, thank you for the thank you all the co-panelists thank you thank you sir thank you dr pradeep you can send me your account number i will be sending a check uh, tomorrow itself for that particular case and when it comes to supreme court please involve us yes i will are you telling me yes sir yeah no 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 money is required because i am not spending any i do it myself sir obviously some 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 expenses occur when when when, when we uh, do the work there are i am also not giving uh, uh, a 3 crore grant yeah i'm sure so, i will definitely yeah but then i will inform you the moment it, uh, it is filed please implead in thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much there are a couple of questions or participants that raised hands we have not been able to answer them i request you to send an email or whatsapp and we will answer one to one thank you very much good night everybody please thank stay you. safe and take care